Bug bounty hunting sounds exciting, doesn't it? Especially when you see people sharing their big wins online. But when you're starting out, it can feel impossible. Everyone's finding bugs except you. I've been there, and I get it. Stick with me till the end of this video, and you'll know exactly how to find your first bug, even if you're starting from scratch. Before we dive into the nitty gritty, let's talk about the foundation. You don't need to mind. So the only reason I even look into bug bounty and hacking and stuff like that, because as a programmer, you always want a side income. It's crazy that no one ever says this. Understanding your code, finding vulnerabilities and stuff like that. So I'm trying to get into old forms of programming. So this is another pit stop. You look at it as a side quest. Yeah, I'm not going to get it. Master every hacking tool or vulnerability before you start bug bounty hunting, but you do need the basics. Learn how to poke around websites using tools like Burp Suite, test parameters to see if you can change or remove them, and perform simple scans with tools like Nmap. Think of this as learning to use a basic toolkit before attempting to build something. For example, understanding how an application processes inputs or handles session data can be your first clue. These skills don't need to be perfect, you just need to know enough to get started. Once you have that foundation, you're ready for the next step, choosing your target. Here's where most beginners trip up. Would that be social engineering to a certain extent? Because that, that's basically like saying, uh, know all the workflows and all the metric, the backend stuff for like the program. So if you know how, for example, if you know how Uber transfers their money and stuff, you could specifically go through those forms and files, not the entire Uber app, but at least those financial files just to see how you could catch a vulnerability in that code. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because it looks like the more you know in hacking, the wider the varieties for finding vulnerabilities. But if you don't know what you don't know, then you can't find it type shit. One application processes inputs or handles session data can be your first clue. These skills don't need to be perfect. You just need to know enough to get started. Once you have that foundation, you're ready for the next step. Choosing your target. Here's where most beginners trip up. They head straight to platforms like HackerOne or BugCrowd, thinking that's where all the action is. But these programs are often picked clean by experienced hackers, leaving you frustrated and stuck in a loop of not finding anything. Instead, start with websites that have vulnerability disclosure programs. These are companies that acknowledge your findings but don't pay bounties. Why? Because most advanced hunters don't bother with them, leaving them as prime targets for beginners. Finding these programs isn't rocket science. You can use Google Dorks or save yourself some time by checking out a GitHub repository like Bug Bounty Dorks. This repository is a treasure trove for finding vulnerable targets that haven't been tested to death. Once you've identified a few potential websites, don't rush in just yet. There's an art to selecting the right target. Avoid the top search results. The websites that appear on pages 1 or 2 of a Google search are often too secure and actively monitored. Instead, dig a little deeper. Think pages 5 or 6. These lesser-known websites are more likely to have overlooked vulnerabilities. Now here's a common beginner mistake, using default tools and word lists without adapting to the website you're targeting. For example, if you're testing a site running on Drupal, don't use a generic word list. Use one specifically designed for Drupal. This increases your chances of finding hidden files or directories that other hackers might miss. GoBuster or Derb are excellent tools for this. By tailoring your approach, you're not just testing, you're hunting smartly. Damn, this is like premeditated cyber murder or some shit, bro. Because you really got to be in the same shoes as the person that made the program, basically. You got to be in the same environment, same mind state, <laughs> and the same time. Because you got to know when and where everything is occurring, like, in real life. So that's... <laughs> Next, let's talk about what's the crime? Like you lose access to the internet for life, right? That seems like a fitting crime for some shit like this. This is just premeditated at this point. Building a proper methodology. Bug bounty hunting isn't about blindly running tools and hoping for results. It's about having a system. Start with an Nmap scan. Think of this as shining a flashlight into the dark corners of a website. Look for version numbers of services or software running on the server. Cross-reference these version numbers with trusted sources like ExploitDB or Rapid7 to check for known vulnerabilities. Here's a word of caution. Not every result you find online is reliable. If a random forum claims a version is vulnerable, 
available, don't waste time on it unless it's backed by credible sources. After checking for vulnerabilities in the server's configuration, move on to directory brute forcing. This step is often overlooked, but it's where you can find gold, hidden files, backup configurations, or even admin portals. Tools like GoBuster are your best friends here. Use them to uncover what's tucked away. Now here's the deal. I'd love to show you step-by-step -step hacking tutorials here on YouTube, breaking it all down for you. But the truth is, those videos would get taken down faster than you can say, Get the fuck out of here. In fact, one of my most popular videos, where I explained how I hacked my uni, purely for educational purposes, didn't even last a week before YouTube nuked it. But if you really want to learn hacking the right way, no fluff, no BS, and everything laid out in a structured path, then you've got to check out Cyberflow's Academy, my community where I don't just talk about hacking, I show you. Sometimes I cap Cyberflow Academy, let's see what it's about. Let's see what it's about. All right, you gotta pay. Yeah, $10 a month. $70 lifetime. So low key, depending on how like willing you are to pay for this, it could be worth it. I ain't gonna lie. I'm considering it. I ain't gonna cap. The only reason I'm saying that is because I want to learn it and I don't want to do it on my own, but I got to see because $10 could get too far on your own too in 2024. So We're talking things like setting up your own pen testing lab step by step, mastering Linux commands while tearing through Metasploitable 2, website hacking basics, real stuff. No script kiddie nonsense. Juicy intel gathering methods that'll make you a recon expert. Exploiting file upload vulnerabilities and even getting your hands dirty with burp suite. And yeah, we've even got the infamous How I Hacked My University tutorial in there. So if you're ready to go from just watching to actually doing, check it out. Li yeah, I'm gonna check it out. I think it's worth it. I ain't gonna cap. I ain't expect it to be an ad at the end, but that was a perfectly timed one. Make sure y'all like, comment, and subscribe to my boy right here. I'm gonna let him know we just tuned in. Video. Yeah, definitely. Butchering my words. Happy holidays. Yeah, this was, that was a good video. Great insight, great everything. Um, yeah, I mean, if there's any questions you guys have, leave it in the comments below. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Also, thank y'all for giving me 3.8, 3.9K. Keep the likes and subs going. For those of you who don't really understand the point of this channel, it's really just to give my insights on things that's already happening in the tech niche and as well as doing some hands-on things with people that want to know more. Those are coming soon. That's coming soon. But thank y'all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all for coming to the lives. If y'all don't know, lives is happening every night. Yes, every night we in the lab. We're doing some leak code shit, trying to work on the game. You feel me? Well, not lead code. I would say free code camp, getting certifications, and then just going up to totem pole from there. Tune in, study, learn, or turn around. You know the model. And I'll see you in the next one.